Hey, Jason, how you doing? Not bad at all. How you doing? That's good. I'm doing good. Uh, how how's your career doing these days? You're playing with UFO quite a bit now. Yeah, um, we're gonna go out in November, and we're gonna do the Midwest and the West Coast, and then they're just starting to book some UK and European dates, which I haven't confirmed for yet. But I'm just I, I'm just noticing that they're starting to book some. 2013, early 2013 dates. So, yeah, it's fun, man. We had a really good UK tour this year, and uh, you know, they're that's where they're from, London. So it's it's always really cool to play through the UK with them. And when you look at uh, like a band like UFO, do you find there's new fans being introduced to the band too nowadays? Yeah, there's there's younger people coming also. Yeah, you know, I think. Uh, I think the, the bands like that, there's not many of them around anymore, you know, so people people discover them, you know, like, oh, that band's, you know, or that band's still out, or, you, you, you know, you're into classic music, rock music, check this band out, and then the kids just freak out about it, so it's pretty cool. What else has been going on in your career? Well, I am um, mixing the new Of Earth record, which is a band that I play and sing for. Um, I'm mixing that. I'm I'm out in LA now talking to some people. Um, Howie Weinberg, he's gonna master it. So um, I'm gonna start releasing that soon. Probably a song at a time. I'm I'm not sure yet, but uh, but it's going great. And that's what I do when I'm you know when I'm in between tours. I work on my band, and uh, I got Spread Eagle back together, which is a band I came up with in the '90s. And, uh, what else? That's all I can think of for the moment, but that keeps me pretty busy. <laughs> going to Overt, you know, when you guys are going to be releasing this, do you find that the market's so different that it's, it's become back like a singles market? Like when Elvis and all of them release actual singles instead of albums first? I think that is the truth, yes. A lot of people are realizing that. Um, lately, I've been just just giving away a lot of music free though you know but but i'm still using that concept of you know maybe a song at, at a time is a cool thing to do um i've never done it before actually i'm just considering it now this would be the first time so uh you know the music's great and people people like it it's really melodic and trippy and so it's uh you know i'm having fun with it i'm having a lot of fun with it it's good to be creative and in different kind of ways, you know, different kind of sounds. Mm. Um, I love so much kinds of, so many kinds of music. I love music so much that I, I hate to just play metal or just pl play pop or just play rock or just one thing, you know? So that's kind of how I keep it really interesting for myself. It's just... Uh, not, it's all rock and roll. It's all hard rock, basically. But it's different shades of of colors, you know. So that's that's fun, you know. And uh, so I'm out in LA. I played last night. Just band. So I'm here for another like three or four days, and then I go back to New York and get back to mixing. And Rob, would you say LA is still booming nowadays? Yeah, it is. It definitely is. Never slowed down? Um, you know, I don't know. I don't, you know, I come here every year, of course. And for Spread Eagle, what are we uh, expecting from you guys in a little bit or 2013? We're, we're, we're planning on putting out a new record in 2013. Yeah. And uh, going over to Europe. We already have some offers to go over there. So uh, we're doing a show in December in New York with Warrior Soul, who's another New York band. They, you know, they're not, they came up out, out of New York also. And, um, you know, around the same time we did, so that'd be cool to do that. But get, uh, finishing your question before the call was dropped, like, I, I'm not in LA enough to know if it ever, if it ever uh, dropped off in, in popularity or intensity of the music scene, but it's definitely happening right now, so.
I've been out every night just hanging with different people. And it's a lot to do out here, that's for sure. New York is a huge, huge city, but it's it's a different city. It's not as there's a lot of music there, but it's it's not as music industry, you know, which you you probably know. Mm-hmm. This place is all about entertainment industry, and it's just everywhere. But New York is still my favorite city in the world to be in. And going, you know, to UFO, let's say, and when you look at the catalog they got. I'm sure there are certain errors you really appreciate of UFO, and which ones would they be? Well, it's hard to not like the classic era the best because it they just all these all the planets were in alignment on that era as far as their talent and their recordings and their songwriting uh, and their, their their the playing. You know, I mean, those songs are just. Incredible, and that's also when I was a little kid. You know, I actually—I'm sure I told you this before when we talked. I went to see them when I was a little kid, but that was with they had Chapman at that time. Um, I think the Vinny era, era is really good. They're writing some really great stuff. Vinny was writing some really great stuff, and definitely live. I think it's the best since like '79, in my opinion now so you should uh, be really uh, pleased when you wake up in the morning and thinking wow i'm playing you know in a, a future classic lineup of ufo yeah i hope so i hope so yeah that's a good way to put it and it's like the first band i'm playing in that i went to see as a kid you know like i played with a bunch of people but um but the first band that i'm playing in that i went to see where i was one of the kids in the in the audience with my fifth eighth and you know. So it's pretty wild. Rom and they're so cool and they're always so uh musically and personally mm. people. Rob endorsements and stuff, how are you doing on that? What are you uh, carrying nowadays? Well, I'm not endorsing anyone. I really need and the only th- only endorsement I I need is strings, and and I gotta pers- I gotta look into that um, because because I use really old vintage gear, you know my bases are all from the 60s or 70s depending on which band backline or a rented amp. My amps are all from the early 70s. You know I use SVTs, vintage SVT mm-hmm. heads and cabinets, and I use. 60s P bases or 70s Thunderbirds. So I understand musicians, you know, wanting to get free stuff in in return for you know their their likeness, you know, their picture or their endorsement or whatever, like you know, or their words. But if you don't, if you really don't need need that particular gear, meaning new gear, then I don't really, you know, I don't really see the need for me to do that, you know. Because no offense to those companies of their new instruments, but they don't sound like the old instruments or the old amplifiers. So that's my take on it, you know. And that is a good point, considering, you know, when you're playing the classic gear, you do actually have classic gear, which the people want to sound like. That's right. Yeah. But, but I, I don't do that just because I'm in UFO, which is a classic band. I've done that all along. I'm I'm really into the vintage gear sound because it's actually... To me, it's more modern that, you know, like, it doesn't sound dated. It just sounds bigger and fatter and meaner and more toneful and more harmonic region. And just, so I think it's hands down better than new gear. So that's why I don't, I'm not really pursuing any endorsements with, with new gear. Yeah, b- believe me, I have nothing, I have no problems with something that's new. And if it sounded better, I'd be using it in a second. But it, to me and to a lot of other people, it really doesn't sound better, you know. That is very well said, Rob. Thank you. Very well said. And Rob, on Of Earth for this band that you've got, the songwriting, uh, how long have you been uh, doing this, let's say, for this upcoming album? Well, we released the other one in, I think, 2010. And then, I, you know, I was flip-flopping between Sebastian Bach and UFO quite a bit touring. So... It's been a couple of years, but I haven't had till this 
the last few months to really work on it much. So, um, but it's been, you know, the, the other record was released in 2010, the debut, and this is our second record. Well, look forward to hearing what you got in this one. I'm sure it's going to be a very good sounding. Thank you. How about you? Who do you play for? I'm playing for an 80s heavy metal tribute. That's all right now. That's cool. Poison Cherry. Kind of poison Cherry? Cool. And uh, what what kind of 80s metal? There was, there was a lot of metal in the 80s. That is a very good question. <laughs> you know, the, the Ozzy Osbournes, the Twisted Sister, Motley Crue, you know, cool. S- Skid Row, stuff nice. like that. And you play guitar? Yeah, guitar in this. Nice. And I tell you, Rob, it's very hard to find... Um, you know, a big act to go and play with and, you know, leave your job, etc. It's, like, almost impossible to do nowadays with this economy, how it is. Yeah, it's, it's a hard life being a musician. If, if you want to be rich, or if, you're, if you're getting into it to be rich or to be a star, you should quit, you know? If you just, if you love it so much that you understand that those things will probably never happen, then... You know that's cool, but and you should, and then you should stick with it. But a lot of people don't know the reality reality of it. Um, there's not a lot of money in it. Uh, even for even for some bigger names, they're not making a lot of money. You know, I mean, money comes in, but it's expen- it's incredibly expensive to be on the road. So money goes out. You know, mm-hmm. and records aren't selling, as you know. So there's no income from that end of the industry anymore or very little income from that end of the industry so it's a hard biz it's it's basically you should only be doing it if you if you love it and you don't want to do anything else you know but any, anyone else who thinks oh i'll do this and i'll get rich or i'll get girls or i'll become a star you should you should just try to do something else that's very well said too and you know the people should uh, you know research it you know maybe before putting all this effort in it yeah I think I think a lot of I think a lot of musicians come and go when they start to realize how hard it is. I mean, it's you know, it's hard for even someone like me who's been doing it forever not to be like seem negative or anything because I'm it, it, my life is very positive and I have a great I have a great life, you know. But uh, you know, there's times in between tours where you have to bartend or whatever, or mm. you know, or there's times where the tour doesn't happen, and they're like, "Oh, it didn't come together. We're gonna we're gonna do it in three months or something." And you're like, "Oh, all right. <laughs> you know, yeah. well, okay, what am I gonna do now?" So it's you, you, the only reason you should be doing it is because you love it. Because there's a lot of reasons not to do it, and uh, maybe that'll turn around. But you know, I think in the history of the world, musicians were only rich for a very short part of that um you know there was that era with like the the poisons and the and the um deaf leopards were you know and then the gnrs were where they were selling 10 million records but but that that's gone and and most of the time in the in the history of of entertainment and music as entertainment they were just hired by like you know kings and things mm. like that to entertain and they weren't rich you know getting rich as a musician is, is a r- relatively new concept you know it started in the last 50 years so for the most part you know and that's fine if you love it that's fine as long as you're making a living it's a wonderful thing and the people have to have fun at it you know fun is the biggest yeah. thing you have to be treated with respect you have to treat people with respect you got to enjoy their company Mm -hmm. you have to have fun and you have to make enough to to, you know to pay your bills you know or or you're going to have to have multiple jobs you know and that little part of history you just reflected on i think it makes complete sense and it's um, a very good point yeah i think like people like mozart were they were they were they definitely were you know taken care of but i don't think they were i don't think they were super super rich or anything i think they were just always taken care of by by rich people um you know and 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 there was always people who were uh who, who 
perform for royalty and, and all that. But um, I think musicians started getting rich for the first time maybe in the 50s, you know, 40s, 50s. Mm. And then, you know, rock and roll hit. And then Beatles came and just blew it all wide open. But definitely that era of, of the of the late 80s, early 90s, when bands were selling, you know, 10 million records, even bands like, I guess it was Creed, and, you know, this band selling 10 million records, you know, the, that's when, that's when people started getting really rich in the industry. But that was, that's a small part of the, of the whole picture of, of the music industry. And so my point, my 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 point is that maybe this, where, where musicians aren't getting rich, is the standard. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe that's that's the way it's going to be for most of the time, and maybe the industry has kind of corrected itself. And that's fine. In the meantime, we're we're out there having a blast and playing for thousands of people, and you know, it's just it's great seeing the world. As I speak right now, I'm, I'm overlooking all of Hollywood from the hills, and it's a very beautiful day. I'm glad your career is going so great, and um, someday I look forward to meeting you again and you know seeing you play with UFO. Yeah, definitely. When we get up, when we get up around that way, I definitely want to hang out with you again. Can't get into the show and all that. Petition to get them. We need to get them to Canada, right? Yes, we need to do that. Definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jason. All right, Rob. Well, you have a very great uh, day in uh, L.A. Okay. Thank you, Jason. You have a nice day also.